I'm Sarah the Gardener and I'm just harvesting my my beans. We don't actually like beans all that much but a garden without beans in it just doesn't seem right. So I came up with a great crop to grow as beans um, because the thing is I was growing all these normal green beans, the French beans and the scarlet runners. Oh, I don't like scarlet runners, they're too Hair, you know, coarse and hairy and bleh, don't like them. But um, so I came up with, so I had all these beans in the freezer that I've preserved and taken care of. Although having said that, pickled beans are really nice. If you haven't tried pickled beans, that's a really good thing to try. Uh, I digress. So I had all these green beans in the freezer and we weren't using them. And so I, um, but I was still buying like, um, beans in the can, the kidney beans, the butter beans and all of those. And I figured, well, let's just see what we can do about growing kidney beans. So I grabbed some dried kidney beans from the dried section of the store and they grew. And so now we have a bean harvest and they're actually really quite cool. Um, you can tell when they're ready because if you just at the slightest touch, slightest touch, there we go, the, pa the thing will just pop open and reveal the most incredible, can you see that? Let me get this so you can see. The most incredible, beautiful kidney beans. So, um, so yeah, you, you get it when the pods are just like, they're so dry that they just rattle. Um, it's just popped up in there, look at that, just sliding off. Um, it's almost like the pods are spring loaded, they're so dry. Um, and so I um, have mostly kidney beans in here. Of course, with dried beans, we know that, well, I'll just let you know that you can't just eat them as they are. You need to soak them first because there are toxins in kidney beans that um, can give you quite a nasty tummy ache. So you need to soak them overnight before you use them and then give them a good boiling when you, um, when you go to cook them. They take low and, long and slow to get the good flavor out of them. Um, so yeah, so that's dried beans. It's just a really um, great little harvest. So there's um, my beans. So and then you get a lot of good brown matter for your uh, compost from the seed pods. Because at this time of year when I'm pulling the garden to bits, there's quite and weeding, there's quite a lot of green matter coming out of the garden. So to mix it up with brown is gonna be really good. Because this weekend's a long weekend, it's Easter. And generally around here that means clearing things up and tidying and putting things away. Uh, so that's what we should be doing this weekend, is just giving the place a bit of an overhaul before winter. Nothing too dramatic really. Um, so there's my beans. It looks like there's new growth coming in. I'll actually get the camera and show you. So you can see the tops of the beans, they're looking quite tired. But if you pull down into the bottom, there's all this fresh new growth at the bottom. So um, I'll leave them there. They might, if we have, if the frost takes a while to come, we may get a new crop. But it's not, it's not all that hopeful. The looping cover crops looking good. Now I have these volunteer um, tomato plants, and some of them are actually doing all right. Look there. They're actually flowering. Now I didn't plant these, these are courtesy of the birds, so I have absolutely no idea what they are. But I'm thinking of digging some up and putting them in the greenhouse. And it would be tempting to take this nice big strong one here, but he probably won't cope too well with the um, change, he's doomed. Those flowers are not going to turn into, tomato, into tomatoes, not, there's not enough time. So if I took this one, because he's quite small, and put them into a pot and overwintered them in the greenhouse we will get um, tomatoes in the winter they grow a lot slower but it's still nice to have tomato -y treats so I think he's earmarked for the greenhouse but I have no idea what he's going to be so we'll see how we do we still have loads of the super yummy sweet bite tomatoes oh so very good I um, that would be the nicest tomato ever. 
Check out this leaf. I'm quite pleased with that. Um, we had leek for tea last night in a chicken and leek pie and it was absolutely delicious. It's so sweet and full of flavour. So we'll get a good size on those leeks. I planted some brassicas yesterday into the brassica bed so we shall have another wave of fresh brassica goodness there's all sorts there's romanesco cabbage cauliflower broccoli kohlrabi loads of different things so we shall see how we get on okay looks like he's got something nasty on him can you see that that's that's white fly That's white fly. Um, they're sap suckers and they're a pain in the. And they're really hard to get rid of. So I shall have to look into my box. Any advice will be really welcome. And I'll look into my box and try and find out how to get rid of white fly off my brassicas. Oh dear. I should give this brassica bed a bit of a water. Give them all a bit of a pick-me-up. It's hard work being transplanted. To be honest, I'm not really sure why they're droopy because I planted them um, using the preferred brassica technique. Now I don't know if you've done this before but brassica really like to be planted in firm soil. If you don't um, put it in firm soil then they'll um, just bolt or they'll have loose heads. So I firmed down the soil by stomping all over it and then I dug a hole and I filled it full of water and let it drain and I repeated that twice more and then, um, and then I planted the brassica into there and firmed it down firmly so it's like they've got a really wet environment with which to grow in but they're just still a bit droopy they'll take off as long as that white fly doesn't get them first we've got peas which is good loads of lovely lovely peas so it's a good sign i planted some more along here a few days ago but there's no sign of them. Not yet. I've also sown turnip in the spot. They haven't come up either. I'll keep you posted. And next to the beetroot, I've put some swede. I've never had swede before. We shall have to see what that's like. The kids' garden is doing really well. Those plants look so good. They're going to be so pleased when they come back from the holidays. Now I've been planting seeds myself. We have purple kohlrabi and collard greens. I am so super excited about the collard greens. I had those when I was in America and I just loved them. They were so nice. So it's good to be able to find some seeds here and get them planted. I've also popped in some spinach because spinach is good. And some more rainbow beet because mine um, is starting to get a bit tough. So this last one's a bit of an experiment. I don't even know if it's going to grow. But I took the seeds and I soaked them overnight and then I popped them in the soil. And it's pepper. Not like chilli pepper or capsicum pepper. These are black peppers. Peppercorns. You know the kind. Salt and pepper. You put it in your grinder. Well I took some out of the grinder. And I'm going to give it a whirl. So follow along. Hopefully, maybe we'll see some green come out of this. You never know. You never know. Hello, toast. Just hanging out in the shade. I 
Okay, so the kids came in all excited this morning because on the way to feed the chickens, they found something really exciting, which I thought you guys might want to see. Hold on a minute. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, but this isn't what we're here to see. Chickens lay eggs. Oh, and the corn next door's gone. The maize. They've harvested it away. But what we're here today to look at is something way more exciting. Who needs a mushroom kit when you have them in your lawn? Okay, well, let's just see if it's the good one. It's got to be pink underneath or brown. And indeed it is. These are field mushrooms. So we have quite a few. It's been damp and humid. I said in my last video that mushrooms were in season. Look at that. That's just a fine mushroomy specimen. Look at that. And there's more here. Oh, guess what we're having for tea? Mushroom. There's more over here. Okay, so not a bad wee haul. It's not a lot, but when it's come from your lawn and it's free and you can't get much more local than that, you can't really complain. Can you pause? Toast. Oh no, don't look kiddly on video. Don't think cats like mushrooms. So that's the garden. There's not a lot happening once again. It's the wrong season for crazy busy activity. But there are interesting things. Like the pepper, oh my gosh, how exciting is that? I'm really, really, really hoping that will grow. And um, oh yeah, the um, Eat Local Challenge that started yesterday. I don't think we'll starve to death. Here's hoping. For those of you who don't know what that is, I've signed my poor long-suffering family up to a challenge for the month of April where we will be eating only locally from 200 kilometres around here. It's part of a competition, so hopefully we will do well. I'm doing it from the point of view of um, your average, well, your relatively average normal family, how well they would cope with going local because, I mean, we're not into extreme kinds of things we're just trying to feed our family that's what we're doing here um, but being responsible as well i went to the supermarket uh, the other day to prepare for this thing and i was actually quite shocked at how far flung a lot of our food had come from we're talking thailand poland china our shallots are from america um, loads of different things and so um, to bring it back local um, and eat food that you have to almost eat whole food and cook from scratch which I guess isn't such a bad thing because a lot of those processed food have things in there that I know my grandmother wouldn't recognize as, as food so it's an interesting journey and keep um, following along if you want to know more about it come to my blog um, the links down below uh, I'm posting regularly about what's going on there because it is actually a blogging competition so I'm in my element uh, and then, um, yeah, and so for now, I shall just continue to pick these, um, pick these beans because, and make the most of this beautiful, lovely late summer afternoon because we won't, it's not summer, late autumn afternoon because we won't have too many more like this, especially being, uh, this weekend is the end of daylight savings. There is no more getting away from it. This is the last excuse we can hang on to the coattails of summer. Daylight savings ends on Sunday night. So if you're Kiwi local, turn your clocks back. Back. We get an extra hour. Fall forward. Spring forward, fall back. We get an extra hour. So put your clocks so we get an extra hour. I think that's back. 
yeah anyway so daylight savings ends on sunday um and in the meantime i shall pick on pick these beans and happy easter everyone thanks so much for watching and come again next week for more exciting adventures from sarah's garden oh my gosh okay take care everybody see you later